six different formulas. John used six different pedestrian throw formulas to determine the defendant's speed. And this, is, this was an important point in this trial. Um, I'll get back to it in a second. Braking is established by the brump, bumper fractures because the, the front bumper dipped. So if the resting vehicle would have struck here, the braking vehicle, because it dips, struck them lower. So we, we could show that he was braking, which means he saw them. He saw them at the last second. Okay, but let's go back to those formulas for a second, because I hate this stuff. I, I, I went through it to meet my threshold of not humiliating myself, or at least trying not to, but it doesn't mean I really get it, <laughs> okay? John said, well, let's take a look. And we went out to the scene, and he did his own measurements. He looked at the police measurements. And there are six different researchers who came up with pedestrian throw formulas. And what John did was he took the factual data, and he plugged them into all six formulas, and they came out within a range of like a couple of miles an hour from one another, which tends to support the scientific accuracy of the calculations, right? This makes sense. He's on the stand. I've got one of those charts here with a big piece of paper on it. And I say to John, I said, uh, sir, were you able to calculate a speed based on something called a pedestrian throw formula? Yes, I was. Mr. Kwasnowski, would you step down from the stand and approach this pad? An audible groan from the courtroom. Oh my god, he's going to write stuff on that board. Oh no. This was beautiful. <laughs> and I've had people tell me that it, it won't work, but it did work. He got down, he stood next to the pad, and he gave a little professorial lecture. He said there are six formulas. One was done by a man named Searle in 1983. He dropped cadavers off the back of a truck. <laughs> and using his scientifically accepted formula, which is able to be found you know, in, and known uh, you know, as a part of the state of the reconstruction industry, I concluded a speed of 54, whatever it was, 62, whatever. He writes, Searle, 62. Then I took a man named Apple's formula. Apple did this, that, this, that. He created a formula, which is also scientifically accepted. He writes Apple. He said, using that formula, I got a speed of the next one. And he did it six times. No numbers. No math. On his recommendation, I left it to the defense to challenge the numbers. If they wanted him to do all of that awful math in front of that jury, let them bore the hell out of the jury. But just he gave enough information so that the defense could track down the formula to support that it was scientifically accepted, and he gave the results, and it was a beautiful thing. Slide to stop calculation was used to corroborate those throw formulas, and the final questions, testimonial recency, was testimonial as opposed to reconstruction. Remember I told you you do primacy and recency within each section? Well, his testimony, I wanted the recency of his testimony to be, not be a reconstruction issue. It added credibility. It protected against expert nullification. Mr. Kuznoski, is there anything about the physical evidence that refutes that these pedestrians were crossing from east to west, as Rosa Cintron had said? No, ma'am. Is there anything about the physical evidence that refutes that these pedestrians were crossing in the south crosswalk? Remember, he said they were in the north crosswalk. Rosa Cintron put them in the south. No, ma'am. In a nutshell, Mr. Kwasnowski, is there anything about the physical evidence that refutes the testimony of Rosa Cintron? No, ma'am. No further questions. He was the last witness. The defense expert did not testify. <laughs>